Welcome, Morgan. So before I start, I just wanted to give a little trigger warning. I do talk of suicide and eating disorders. I don't necessarily go into detail about either, but I just thought I'd throw in the air that I do use these words. Okay, so with that being said, I want everyone in this room to think of the ideal body type for women. I bet most of you thought of something like this. Little waist, big boobs, big butt. But see, that's the problem. None of you thought of a body that looks like this, or even like this. In today's society, men and women have created a huge stigma around what the ideal women's body should look like. Why aren't these two women's bodies perfect? Because one's a little overweight and one's a little underweight. Why don't they deserve to feel perfect in society too? Social media platforms such as Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook have helped create these unrealistic body standards that teens and young women feel the need to live up to. This may not seem like anything major, but it can, but it can help develop dangerous or even life-threatening habits. In a study by the National Organization for Women, they reported that 50% of teen girls feel self-conscious about their bodies. At the age of 13, 53% of American girls say they feel uncomfortable with their bodies, and at the age of 17, that number jumps to 78%. 78% of all girls our age feel self-conscious about their bodies. Teen girls should be worried about enjoying the best years of their lives, not these unrealistic body standards they feel the need to live up to. While more and more teens across the world are beginning to find many insecurities from looking at the picture-perfect models on social media platforms, young women are beginning to hate themselves in the way that they look. If society were to drop body standards, it would help young women feel more comfortable in their own skin and find love for themselves. One of the things that body dysmorphia, a mental disorder that can be caused by low self-esteem, affects is your fashion choice. When you can't fully recognize the person you see in the mirror, it's kind of hard to shop for clothes. You'll stay away from crop tops because you don't think your stomach is flat enough, or if you do look the person by that crop top, you'll find yourself wearing something over it like a zip of putty or a flannel. The bigger the better. Big baggy t-shirts hide the outline of your stomach and the shape of your thighs, Baggy pants had to shape your legs, and big hoodies do all of the above. Many that struggle with self-image issues would dress to fit this description, but some may wear clothes like many others and still feel self-conscious about themselves. In an article written by a dose, in an article written by a dose of wine, the writer says, "I had a hard time choosing clothes because half the time I couldn't actually see myself looking good in anything that I touched." Body image issues really take a huge toll on the minds of women and teenagers alike. You are trapped in your head with these horrible feelings and you can't quite seem to escape. I've seen many videos on TikTok and YouTube with the titles along the lines of, is this outfit cute or is she just skinny? Why should what looks good on people be determined by their body weight? If you like those pants, don't just wear them, rock them. But having a different body type doesn't mean you can't look just as beautiful in the clothes that they wear. Wear whatever clothes you think are cute. Body types have no authority over what you can and cannot wear. Body dysmorphic disorder doesn't usually get better on its own. When left untreated, it can worsen over time, leading to anxiety, severe depression, and even suicidal thoughts or behaviors. In some cases, body dysmorphia can cause eating disorders such as anorexia, bulimia, and binge eating disorder. Uh, while we're here, I just wanted to point out some of the potential signs of an eating disorder. We have excessive exercise, preoccupation with feeling fat, abnormal electrolyte levels, intense fear of gaining weight, unusually large intake of food, and anxiety around or avoidance of eating. Personally, I've had the not so great pleasure of experiencing the effects of self-image issues, but thankfully I've never developed an eating disorder or ever tried to hurt myself. It is constantly draining to feel so disgusted with yourself. It feels as though you are trapped inside of a game with no way to escape. As someone who suffers with low self-esteem, I've learned that two high levels of self-esteem are linked to criminality, so although I may not enjoy the look of myself, I won't be linked to being a criminal. Not liking the image of yourself goes way beyond not liking what you see in the mirror. These feelings can cause persistent feelings of sadness, depression, anxiety, anger, shame, or guilt. And many of these factors on a day-to-day -day basis can trigger these. Say you eat a piece of cake at a party or you go out for ice cream with friends. This is, these are one of the many things that can trigger these feelings. You'll find yourself watching what you eat for the rest of the day or in the few days to come, regretting ever letting yourself eat something so bad for you. It truly feels like the end of the world sometimes, even though the ice cream or cake isn't going to kill you. I wish the sayings, not all bodies are the same, and your best is enough, were said more often. With these sayings thrown in the air, young women would become more comfortable with their beautiful bodies that they have. You don't have to have an unrealistic body like the girls on the covers of magazines, because the truth is, most of the time they're unreal, unnatural, and photoshopped. 
Try to change your perspective on yourself and realize that you shouldn't spend your days moping about how you didn't look like a model in the jeans you wore that day. But to be grateful that your body is able to function properly, which is a blessing. Nobody understands the work you put in by yourself. And although your best not maybe although your best may not be absolutely perfect, it should be enough for you when you try your hardest. More and more catalogs are becoming available with women who have bodies that aren't ideal in them. For example, Victoria's Secret Pink and Airy, which are both targeted towards younger women, both produce catalogs with women of all shapes and sizes presented in them. As a girl who struggles with self-image issues, it is really comforting to see all girls of shapes and sizes so happy in magazines. It helps show that you don't. Okay. It helps show that you don't need to be of one body type to be happy and accepted into society. Help teach young women that all bodies are beautiful. Bigger, small, tall, or short. No one deserves to be ashamed of the way that they look when all bodies are beautiful. I'd like to read a poem that I found online that explains the thoughts of self-image issues. The poem reads, oh, why does it go so fast? There we go. I see my reflection in my stomach drops. Is that really what I look like? My arms are fat, my stomach is round, my legs are too big. I move closer and look at my face, acne, acne scars, wrinkles, blackheads, eye bags. I feel the tears form my thoughts screaming at me. I'm so ugly, I'm worthless. Why do I look like this? My arms wrap around my stomach and I feel myself shrink. Why can't I just like myself for who I am? And I can't help but wonder if I think so badly of myself, do others. The poem was written by an anonymous writer and does a great job of explaining these feelings. While wallowing in your own thoughts on how unperfect your body is, you're also worried about how others see you. Try, don't try to mind me because the truth is you're probably wrong. These horrible feelings that you believe that everyone feels the same way about yourself, even though that's not the case. Self-love. Appreciate yourself for who you are and put yourself first. Love your body unconditionally because after all, it is what keeps you up and running every day. I know that sometimes it's way harder than it sounds, but with a little bit of practice, you can achieve whatever you want. In an article written by Taylor Potmere, she tells us about how we can love ourselves in seven steps. Step one, stop being so mean. Recognize the unhealthy patterns in your day-to-day -day life and grant yourself the kindness you grant others. Step two, take care of yourself. Check in with yourself and notice what you are feeling, but don't overwhelm yourself. Start small. Step three, prioritize what is important. Live your life with your interests as the priority. Step four, spend time with people who fill your cup. Start spending your time wisely and do with the people you enjoy the most. Step five, change how you think. Shifting how you think can have a huge impact on your life. Your perception informs your reality. Step six, notice the good things. Practice gratitude. Spend time thinking about the good things in your life, all the things that make you happy, and you'll begin to notice more positivity. And step seven is to understand that all of this takes time. Perfectionism has no place in the relationship you are building with yourself. You'll have to give yourself time. One of the best ways to improve your self-esteem is to recognize one thing that you're good at. So I want all of you to recognize one thing that you're good at. Um, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but no matter, the, what be, no matter what it may be for you, just know that all the hard work that you've put in to get this far or to be as good at whatever it is it may be, I just want you to know that all your hard work doesn't go unnoticed and neither do you. So no, you are not the way that you truly feel about yourself. Love yourself a little extra today. You deserve it. Thank you. Yes, well, yes. Thank you.